Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two of this news bulletin. We left off with this article, TSA DHS order 1,400 pounds of high-powered explosives set to deliver August 31st. And something else that's been going on, uh, weird stuff that's going on besides viruses and stuff like that, is this. Homeland Security tests to begin at train stops in Cambridge. This is in Boston, I believe. The federal government Wednesday will begin releasing bacteria at the Red Line stations in Cambridge and Somerville at set times to test sensors designed to detect biological agents and could be released in a terrorist attack. So were you asked, were you given a, a choice, you know, to vote on this? No, you weren't, you know? And it says here, the press released Monday that harmless bacteria is non-infectious and the test will be performed when the stations are closed. So they'll be gone on Wednesday, you'll think, oh, it's just Wednesday. No, they'll actually, they'll be held periodically over the next year. And I remember hearing about that uh, a year or two ago, but now they're actually doing it. Then we have the NNSA plans aerial radiological survey of San Francisco area. I know most of you have already seen some of this news, but just tying it together, residents of San Francisco Bay Area could see, low again, all these low-flying helicopters operated by the agency that oversees nuclear material safety in the coming days. The Nuclear Security Administration said it plans an aerial survey between August 27th and September 1st aimed at improving aerial radiation measurement capabilities used by local, state, federal entities. And it's interesting because they're saying improving radiation measurement capabilities, but when you go to the Department of Nuclear Engineering, University of Berkeley, California, EPA, to raise safe limits. This is actually from 2011, March. EPA is at it again. They now want to change the safe limits of exposure to humans. This is the EPA. Again, this is like the police. They're there to protect you. The EPA wants to raise the protective action guides to levels vastly higher than those at which they are currently set, allowing for more radioactive contamination of the environment and the general public. So that should help you sleep better at night tonight. Something uh, else as well. They've been conducting similar flights in the past few months in May uh, in Baltimore. Never, I never even heard about that. So their thing is, is they want to establish baselines of normal part of security and emergency preparedness. So it's all about training, and they want to find what the natural background is. Well, if they're going to raise the natural background, they're just going out there to see how bad it really is, and then say, oh, well, there you go, guys, that's the safe level. So we're talking about low-flying planes as well. A lot of creepy stuff going on, little exercises around the country. And a lot of spraying. Low-flying plane is on a mosquito mission. Remember this from July 10th. And this is the U.S. Air Force plans on Monday uh, as complaints continue to rise to spray for these mosquitoes. So the, they're going to be spraying just 150 feet off the ground. And they're going to take another whack at the population of mosquitoes. No, and mosquitoes and people, especially people. But just remember, this is just like everything else. As the complaints continue to rise, just like in Texas where they're spraying, people don't want it, you know. Manhattan to be sprayed against West Nile virus. So one of New York's most expensive neighborhoods will be sprayed this week with pesticide to combat West Nile virus, according to officials. Now, I'm not saying there's not a mosquito uh, problem or just a lot of more mosquitoes or ticks or fleas. I know, I can tell there is. But it doesn't justify forced spraying force medicating people like fluoride in the water again where's the vote so that's my argument for these people well you know it is kind of bad and oh well you're not for bad teeth are you it's like well no you're being naive man you're being naive because you think that you're free you think that you have a choice you don't have a choice you're told what to do what to think and this is what's going to happen we're going to carry uh, eugenics out on you as the economy is breaking down more and more and we're preparing for it but everything's going to be okay. And the, the crazy thing, too, is is what? Is that I just made a connection with uh, New Jersey and Texas and that, where they have these petrochemical factories where there's a lot of a high amount of air pollution, usually correlates with this, quote, West Nile virus, which technically hasn't even been proven that it exists. So, But they're going to keep spraying. Say no to genetically modified mosquito release in Florida Keys. Again, this is another thing, releasing uh, genetically modified mosquitoes. I think they've already done it, but they keep talking about it as if they're going to do it here in the Florida Keys. Just like everything else, even though the local community in the Florida Keys has spoken, they don't want it. 
We even passed an ordinance demanding more testing. This British company, Oxitech, is trying to use a loophole by applying to the FDA for an animal bug patent. And they'll probably get it because, like I said, the FDA and all of these uh, enti government entities are there to fuck you over and help out these corporations, these globalists, these eugenicists. They're going to release these genetic, genetically modified mutant mosquitoes, and that should be really good for the environment. But you can go in there and sign a petition. Links will be posted. Next up, AIDS-like virus disease mysteriously appears where Merck conducted vaccine trials in Southeast Asia, specifically Thailand. An AIDS-like virus has been found in people that are not infected with HIV. Those infected have their immune systems compromised. Health officials say this is a new AIDS virus, is not contagious, which begs the question, how do these people come down with the new strain of AIDS? Actually, in 1962, the U.S. Senate received a report concerning chemical and biological warfare. Just to give you a background on what your government's capable of. This is the government contract where HIV-like and Ebola-like viruses were bioengineered by the U.S. military and bioweapons contracting lab Biomedics. They were producing viral cancer in monkeys that could then be used through genetic engineering to infect humans. Let's not forget they took the bird flu and then uh, basically um, enhanced it so that it can be transferred to humans more easily. Robert Gallo, working with the National Cancer Institute, was part of this project. Millions of people are dying from U.S.-sponsored government projects to depopulate certain groups of people because of their ethnic heritage, and the U.S. government knew about it and endorses it. They've also uh, worked with the Ebola virus and the plague as well. So they're trying to bring these things back. And eugenicists such as, well, not Bill Gates, he just carries it out, but people like Paul, Paul Ehrlich and that that I covered recently, they say, you know, uh, or uh, Mr. Bianca, the scientist down in Texas, they, they, they look forward to a nice big virus just wiping things out. And, of course, the good thing is if, you are, if you're the right person, you might be able to get the, the dose, the, the vaccine, right? Gates Foundation funds anti-vaccine surveillance and alert system and on-demand vaccine delivery with low-cost unmanned aerial vehicles. So this is the same guy that was just talking about how we're all going to go vegetarian uh, because there's not going to be enough water. Part of it is going to be counteracting communication campaigns containing misinformation. That's people like myself and other people that are trying to help people to stay away from these fuckheads regarding vaccines to support global immunization efforts. So some of these um, anti-vaccine surveillance and alert systems include developing unmanned aerial vehicles that can be deployed by healthcare workers via cell phones to swiftly transport vaccines to rural I remember, remember I've covered this so many times, rural locations and alleviate the last mile delivery problems. Improve cost, quality, and coverage of eugenics. Also, what they're, the eugenicists are trying to do now is actually have it so that you could swallow a pill and it will monitor your body and tell you when you uh, should take your dose of eugenics, your pills and your pharmaceuticals and that, your drugs. It actually tells you by order of your doctor. So you can see where this is going. Minnesota's first case of new swine flu reported. So again, another thing, right? New influenza strain uh, that people acquire through contact with pigs, although it's not just that because I just got it a month ago here in the Midwest, is now in Minnesota. So it's moving. Then the TB continued drug-resistant strain of deadly disease alarms doctors worldwide August 30th. The world is in the middle of a tuberculosis pandemic, scientists say. What was once a disease of undeveloped nations has raced across continents with thousands of cases in Asia and Europe and may infect up to 2 million people by 2015. I think the biggest reason is because many of them are resistant to vaccination. Could that be because maybe it was from the vaccinations that they got it from? Like the paralysis from the vaccines that were promoted, people like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in Pakistan and that? They actually found it's called polio-derived paralysis from the vaccines. New Heartland virus discovered in sick Missouri farmers. Two Missouri men who became severely ill after sustaining tick bites were found to be infected with a new type of virus, according to the CDC, another eugenics entity, government entity. They just want to make sure the eugenics is taking hold and to track it, to monitor it. So the eugenicists are, are just they're like um, obsessed with, with numbers and, and, and research and stuff like that so that they can enhance it and make it better. Of course, it didn't improve, af it didn't improve after antibiotics because everybody has so much antibiotics in them already from their food. The courts will soon decide if police can sample your DNA without a warrant, whether Americans have the expectation of privacy over their DNA. Again, you're a slave. We live in a di scientific dictatorship. You're a research lab rat. So no, you don't have a say. 
So this individual, the ACLU in Northern California, is challenging a California law that requires all felony arrestees to give a DNA sample. So, oh, they're felonies. They're criminals, right? Oh, they're f they hurt somebody. They victimized somebody. Well, no, they, maybe they didn't. They don't deserve to be lab rats. They don't deserve to be put in forced labor camps, you know? That's that mentality that I cannot stand, that naive mentality of, oh, well, they're criminals. Well, okay. Well, what if you were in a bad situation? You lived in the ghetto, say, in the south side of Chicago. There were no jobs. You couldn't get out. You had to support your family. You had to deal drugs. And then you get busted by some pig, right, who probably would turn around and sell it on the side himself. You know, that's being naive. These guys are in there, most of them, for victimless crimes, and they got them stacked in there, mass incarcerations, record high numbers for a reason, because now they're turning that into a business, the private uh, prison industry and slave prison labor industry. So again, for those people that are naive and don't think that this is going to happen, it's already happening to babies and mothers, mothers who aren't aware that the blood and DNA is being extracted from their babies right after birth and stored in a database, and they don't know about it. See, because people have to cry about it enough to say, well, you got to opt out. Sorry, we didn't tell you. So while people are fighting the legality of police being able to basically go in there and take your DNA without a warrant, appeals court upholds Gene Patton's August 21st, 2012 biotechnology court finds that isolated DNA is eligible for patent protection, a victory for the biotech industry. Great. So that's what the judges are there for, right? Probably masons or skull and bones or something or some fraternal order, right? Uh, they, they, they passed it, right? So that's good. That's great. They can patent your genes. But it's good. It's good. You know, it's, it's going to help the disabled and stuff like that, right? For genetic screening uh, that will become eventually mandatory to be able to procreate you have to have certain genes to be able to get a job like Gattaca you're gonna to have to give a prick of blood which I why I mentioned before about the the carbon footprint the carbon which I, I believe the makeup is what is it the six neutrons six electrons six protons the 666 your carbon footprint your blood you better have the right one in this brave new world the disturbing army militia plot in Georgia so we're talking about what? Ooh, yeah, talking about a terrorist group with active duty U.S. troops in Georgia who planned to assassinate the president and overthrow the government. So they had big, bold plans and lots of money. So this is just after this uh, Mr. Page, the, a former vet that went in there and uh, carried out the Sikh shooting. So now they're tying it to military members. They're tying it to whitey, white people as domestic as the terrorists now bringing it home to domestic terror i've been covering this since i started ggn in 2009 late 2009 early 2010 because i saw this coming you could see it as plain as day american taliban now this is the first time that i've actually seen something like this that was actually a, a like a white dude american taliban seeps group prayer in indiana prison american-born taliban john walker lynn nice three names huh but people in the comment board, they miss it, right? They miss it. They go down there, read a comment board, and they'll say, oh, you, you, you waived your rights. You know, oh, you know, you waived your rights. You're a criminal, and, and you want to be a Muslim? Like, screw that. You know, that's what everybody says in the comment board, but they're missing the point of what they're doing here, what, what the agenda is that's taking place. So this group... Their ideology, they're saying it's unknown, it's not clear, but they're calling them what? An anarchist group and militia, because that's who the, quote, they see as the enemy, or basically the biggest threat when uh, the shit hits the fan. Because you're going to have people in the militias that are, quote, patriots or constitutionalists are going to be like, well, we saw this coming. This is because of the Federal Reserve System. This is because there's Zionists in our country. This is because we have communists in our country, whatever. And then you're going to have people that are anarchists, and, uh, well, half of them aren't going to be real anarchists because they're going to think that it means no law. Well, it does mean law. It means common law. You can, can you know, people have a right to defend their, themselves and their property still in a stateless society. But uh, my point is, is that the anarchists are going to be like, well, dude, let's try something new. We have an opportunity to try something new. So those are the two biggest threats for the federal government. Another part of this story is what? He used the army to recruit militia members. So where else did we see that? In this story about the Sikh shooting, neo-Nazis are using the army as a training camp. And we're seeing this a lot more. They said about it in the Olympics too, anarchists, right? Agencies warn of possible anarchist activities at the Republican convention. Like everything else, they really don't want people to come out. But if they had it their way, they would just, you know, there would be no no voting. There would be no, you know, can't even go out and protest. They're making that uh, to the, uh, right now, you almost to where you can't even go and protest. 
you know, free speech zones and that. So they do things like this. Hurricane Isaac brings thousands of National Guard troops to the region. Police outnumber convention protesters four to one in Tampa. And here's one of the drones that they're going to have on standby for the convention and go up to, what, 50 miles an hour, shoot shotguns, uh, deploy smoke. But if we're so free and this country is so great, then why all the security? Thanks.